So we have a preview of the first ever Women's Tour de France. Now, this is obviously not technically the first because there were a couple before, but they weren't done by ASO and all the rest of it. This is like the first ASO one, I'm pretty sure. So stage one is normally what the women often only get, which was um, the lap round the Champs-Élysées. Again, you know, it's a sprint stage. Um, Vibes will probably win it or someone like that. Chloe Hosking or the like. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it is what it is. There's not really much to say about it. Nothing's going to happen except for sprint. Um, stage two is, again, not crazy exciting. It looks like the finish might be uphill. Often on the ASO, they don't give too many details about, like, the very final kilometer. Um, let's see if they say, uh, yeah, it just says, anyway, it's going to be a sprint, potentially, maybe uphill. So it could, could suit different riders. Could be more of a punchy, punchy type of rider. Balsamo, world champ. Could, could be a shout. Never know. Anyway, uh, this one again is into Epinay, which actually is where Alaphilippe won the stage, uh, read it, um, and it looks like an interesting stage. I quite like these ones where they have got like punchy finishes in the final, so it's like, is it going to be a sprint train, especially with women's cycling where like there aren't as many huge sprint trains, so it means actually like if you're a punchy rider, you can attack well in the final, like maybe Cassie Nuidoma, people who are good in the spring classics, obviously Van der Bregen, I don't think it's racing, it's actually retired, so it will open up a little bit, uh, but yeah, one kit. 4.6% doesn't sound crazy, but it's enough to do some damage. 900 meters at 12%, that is good. Uh, that could definitely cause some damage. So this will be interesting. Also, because these stages are so short, like 133K, they can really race them from the off very hard. Uh, this is also, I think, quite a nice stage as well. Um, sort of punchy. It's for the break, maybe. Uh, however, I think the only thing maybe which we are going to get into is the, the lack of like pure breakaway stages. Like this one here, you'd expect... Um, if this was a men's race, I don't know who you'd expect, but I think with the women, because like there's not as many like teams who are really going to commit um, to like let a breakaway go, they want to win more stages, I reckon it probably could still be a strong, like if you're leading the GC, you might as well, you know what, I might just happen to have it. Um, I don't think it could also be a break. It was sort of one of those in-between stages where you think final climb 1.8k at 4%, 1.7k at 5%, it's not too hard, like there are a lot of categorized climbs, but none of them seem crazy. Um, like bonkers and then um, yeah there are some also some gravel sectors as well which I guess will mean that it's actually a lot more aggressive now I think about it yeah it's it will definitely be like a GC day a lot of aggression um, on the on the gravel stages which will be interesting to see um, and I don't think really um, there's been much gravel I don't think they've ever done this in the tour actually so it should be exciting to see what happens um, stage five again just sort of a pretty classic sprint stage i don't i can't imagine it not being a sprint stage long stage as well 175k which is always interesting always a lot of debates should women's stages be longer i think you know what there's no point in making them longer if, unless you think it's going to add more like i don't know unless you think you know that by having like a 200k stage it will impact the race later because often the 200k stages aren't interesting but the thing is the effect is more interesting afterwards so maybe they just need to experiment and see what happens and see if it's exciting or not uh this stage again is like I'd say a classic breakaway stage, really. But then, at the same time, it's not that hilly, so if you're a sprinter, you could be like, mm, I could get over this. It all just depends how it's raced, but often, because women's racing, again, as I said, it's, it's so aggressive, like, controlling it for the sprint is often quite risky, because you might just get Voss, who gets an outraged sprinter, or Demi Vollering, who's also an outraged sprinter, can also climb very well, so then it's like, could just bin them all uphill on this 1.3k and then if you're like leading out for a pure bunch sprint like Chloe Hosking or someone uh, or Veebs or someone then you're like oh, a slight waste of my time stage seven now we actually get some proper mountain stages uh, again this is a pure GC stage um 9k at eight percent pretty solid 7k at eight percent again solid and then the final climb the Grand Ballon uh, which is 13 and a half kilometers at 6.7 percent so a decent climb again nothing like absolutely bonkers from any of them but it's a solid like three you know three mountain top finish three mountains sorry all like long this will be a good stage it'll be interesting to see um how it's taken on and also because there'll actually be tv footage unlike so the Giro Rosa, which is the only one other race in the women's calendar has like really really long climbs the whole time but often there's no coverage and the final stage finishes up La Ponge de Belfi, but it's like super Ponge de Belfi, so it has the gravel part at the end, which makes it like 24% and a bit longer. They also go up Ballon d'Alsace, the hard way, which is 8k at 7%. This stage will be really good. I think the only thing is you'll probably know who's going to win the stage by now. I can't imagine that anyone who's going to be in the GC lead will necessarily lose on Ponge de Belfi, because as I said before, it's proving the men's races, like it's, it's, it's quite irregular, but then at the same time, there are some flat parts. So like what 
how do we think that this ranks as the first, you know, um, Tour de France Femme? Well, the question would be, what would make it better? And I think, you know, they don't go to the Pyrenees, they don't go to the Alps, and obviously there's the length as well. So I think if you go first, to, first thing, length, should it be longer? I don't know. I think maybe start like this, don't want to go absolutely crazy, like having a three-week um, bender I don't think is necessarily the best thing and also a lot of the time people in women's cycling like I don't actually want a three week bender because the men's have it and like you know it's got to be different and I think that's a valid point so I don't necessarily think the length is a huge issue I guess the only issue is for me personally is that there's a lot of transitional stages there's a lot of like sprint stages which I think is fine but like if you're going to have stage one two and two quite boring okay there's the gravel stage which will be very exciting I'm, I'm like that will be really good to watch but then like some of the other ones, you're just like, we could just do with a bit more medium mountains. Like the only really like, because I guess their big mountain stages that this year are still not like bonkers. They're not like the Tourmalet or something like that. Uh, so that's a bit, you know, this is in some sense could be like a medium mountain stage if they didn't finish so high up. So then you know, then had a flat run and that would be really interesting to see how that was. And then have another two actual mountain top finish. So I think Ponce de Belfi, fine. Be interesting to see. Uh, women go up there but then the other question is like Alp out the west that would have just been mad like the first one um because they did Roubaix this year first time ever next year did like out the west I think that would be really good to see but maybe the, you know the cost and all the rest of it out the west didn't want to host I'm not sure but I think that would be super exciting to see um women's finish up out the west and finish up some of the iconic climbs obviously back in the day when they had um the, what was it called? I can't even remember. It was La Course, wasn't it? And they finished up the Izawad before the men. That was pretty good. Um, and I did. It was good to see, see the comparison of the times and all the rest of it. It was actually a pretty, pretty sick event that one. Uh, but yeah, that's my thoughts of the Tour de France de Femme. Um, it was a pretty good race. I think gravel stage is definitely going to be my highlight. I think after that, um, you know, the mountain top finishes will be decent. Like I, I don't imagine myself tuning in for much of stage one really until, until the final couple of kilometers. Uh, but and, you know, having said that, if you're a bit bored, might as well whack on cycling. Be rude not to. But anyway, cheers for watching, uh, and we'll see you in the next one.